Today we're going to take a second look at another battleground state for 2024 and see which way it might be trending. The lucky state today is going to be Pennsylvania. And as always, this map here shows you the presidential shifts between 2016 and 2020. The vertical lines indicate turnout, and if you look at PA, the amount of blue clearly drowns out the red. So this state has been back and forth over the past few elections. It's expected to be yet again one of the major swing states. So what we always start out with is a little bit of background information. So let's get over to 270 to win and take a look at the Keystone State. So Pennsylvania has declined in population. That's indicated by its reduction in electoral votes. It went from 20 in 2020 down to 19 in this current election. And last time, we could see Biden won the state by about 1.2. In 2016, Trump carried the state by about 0.7. Now, one notable difference in 2020 compared to 16 is the reduction in third-party vote. There's going to be many other factors, but between 16 and 20, Trump's support on here went up six-tenths of a percent, while Biden's went up two and a half. Now, back in the Obama days, he carried this state twice. In 12, it was narrower, and in 2008, it was by about a 10-point margin. The state was fairly close again during the Bush years. Then it went to Clinton two times relatively comfortably. Then prior to Trump, George H.W. Bush did carry the state in 88. Then Reagan carried it two times before that. And then Carter edged out Ford in 1976. So the state has voted for the Republican a few times over the past 10 elections, but only one time out of the past eight. Now let's look closer at the last election. Again, we've got Biden right at a majority of support 50.0 with about 80,000 votes less Trump had 48.8 and this time there's way less third party vote Joe Jorgensen had the most with 1.1 then down below we can look at the county map and familiarize yourself with some of the major cities on here they've got Erie in the northwest Pittsburgh in the southwest then Allentown and Philadelphia in the southeast now down below if we sort the counties by the total number of votes cast we could see in Philadelphia County it went massive for Biden a 64 point margin then after that the five next most populous counties also voted for Biden, including the suburban Philadelphia counties such as Bucks, which went for him by four. Then Trump was able to snag some of the medium-sized counties, and as you go to the lower population counties, Biden picked up a few, but the ones with extreme low populations of under 60,000 all voted for Trump, and many of them were by gigantic margins of 30, 40, or more points. Now let's take a stroll through some of these counties and see some of the shifts. For that, we get on Ballotpedia. Now as always, the shading on this map does not indicate the margins. That just shows you how often they voted for the Democrat or the Republican in the past three presidential elections. So let's begin in the most populous county, Philadelphia. Even though Biden won it by a huge landslide, Biden's total is lower than Hillary's as well as Obama's in 12. And on the other side, Trump did better than Romney in 16, and he also outdid himself in 2020. So that's where over 12% of the population is. Yet the movement there is actually toward Trump on the right. So that is one potential bright spot for Trump. Now, if we look at the suburban counties, we'll start in Delaware. This one in 2020 is bluer than where it was in 12, and Trump's support is almost three points lower than Romney's. So clearly the trend here is in the opposite direction of Philadelphia. Next door in Chester. This one actually was won by Romney in 12. It easily flipped and went to Hillary in 16. Then that margin widened even more in 2020. Biden getting it by 17. In Montgomery, it's a similar story. Hillary in 16 outperformed Obama. Then Biden in 20 outperformed Hillary. That's another clear shift toward the left in this county. Then in Bucks County, it was just over a point for Obama in 12. Then with more third-party vote, that margin actually narrowed to under one point in 16. Then in 2020, with less third-party vote, that margin widened. It was not significant, but Trump went down four-tenths, while Biden went up over three. Now, the most populous county that Trump won is west of Chester. This is Lancaster or Lancaster County, however you want to say it. And between 16 and 20, you can see both candidates gained some vote here, but Trump was only up about a half a point, while Biden went up a full three. So that's clear movement again away from Trump and toward Biden. Now, I've Obviously, we can't go over every county, but a few more we can glance over would be Lehigh County. Trump here in 2020 pretty much getting the same total he did in 16, as well as Romney in 12. And Biden in 20 also doing very similar to what Obama did in 12. East in Northampton. This is a county that voted for Obama in 12, but Trump flipped it in 16. Then in 20, Biden won it by one point. Now, some of these counties in the Northeast are potential spots that Trump could make some gains. Luzerne County voted for Obama back in 12 by about five points. Then in 16, it shot way to the right and Trump won it by about 19. However, in 2020, it did shift a little bit back toward Biden. It's similar with a lot of other counties in this region in Lackawanna. Obama won this by about 27, 28 points in 12. In 16, it lurched extremely hard toward Trump. Hillary only won it by three and a half. Then in 2020, Biden won it by about seven. Now, if we quickly take a look at Allegheny County, this has Pittsburgh. This is another one where Biden is doing better than Obama did in 12 and Trump is doing worse than Romney as well as his first run in 16. 
Now, if you look at some of these red counties, many of them already supported Romney by massive margins. But when Trump ran in 16, his brand and messaging really resonated in a lot of these counties. And even though there's not a lot of people here, you can see that that's when many of them went from being very red to extremely red. There's a lot of interesting dynamics in this state, unions, manufacturing, healthcare, etc. There's a lot of different economic as well as cultural issues that have caused different parts of the state to move in different directions. So you can see it is a fairly polarized state. Now, if you want another way to take a look at some of this vote, we can get on this map here. This shows you the 2020 vote. However, it shows you the data all the way down to a precinct level. So if we pull in on Philly and the surrounding suburbs, you can see that this is pretty much all blue, and especially in the city, which is very, very dark blue. Biden won many of these precincts with support that's in the mid to high 90s. However, if you click right here, this will show you the shifts between 16 and 20. If we do that, then we see a little bit of a different picture. Precincts right around Philadelphia actually did move toward Trump. Some of them are even by double digits. But once you get outside of the urban area and deeper into the suburbs, then there's very little that moved toward Trump. It's pretty much a sea of blue out here. And that's kind of a double-edged sword for Trump. It's still overwhelmingly blue, but he did make some small gains in the city. However, it was more than outweighed by his losses in the suburbs. And it's similar in a few other cities of this state, including Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, Allentown, etc. Next, we can move out of this map here with the red and the blue arrows. These are the shifts between 16 and 20. The bigger the arrow, the bigger the shift. So you can see there are more blue arrows on here, but there are some red ones as well, including Philadelphia County there in the southeast, but we can also click on any one of these arrows for a more detailed breakdown. Let's take a look at an important county we haven't looked at yet. In the northwest, the notch is Erie County. This could easily be the key swing county in the state, but last time, with less third-party vote, both Biden and Trump gained votes, but Biden gained a lot more. He was over 10,000, while Trump was at 6,800. The reduction in third-party vote is clear. It was down almost two-thirds, a raw 3% reduction down to just 1.4. And throughout all those shifts, both Biden and Trump gained some support. Support, but Biden gained 2.8 while Trump was up at just 0.2. So that kind of sums things up. Between 16 and 20, there was just more vote that went into the two major party candidates, and Biden was the clear beneficiary. Now, one thing that could be key to which way the state is going to trend that we haven't talked about yet are going to be the shifts among specific demographic groups. So if we look at the exit polling specific to Pennsylvania in 2020, keep in mind this is just based on who was willing to take the survey, but Trump did win men 52 to 47, and Biden won women by the same margin. Biden won voters under age 45. Trump was the winner with those over 45. With education, Trump captured those with some college or high school or less. And of course, Biden captured college grads and postgraduates. If you're looking for population density, Biden won urban voters by 35. Suburban voters, which are going to be key, did go toward Biden as well by 10 points. I'm not sure what the cutoff is, but small town went toward Trump by 7. And rural voters, which are key to Trump's constituency, voted for him by 38 points. Down here, Election Day voters also heavily supported Trump by 35 points. Mail-in ballots, on the other hand, went toward Biden by 57. And then another factor, which a lot of people are probably going to mention, is going to be the racial or the ethnic breakdown. White voters, which were 85% of this exit survey, voted for Trump by 9, 54 to 45. Black voters went toward Biden by an 89-point margin. Hispanic voters, which were 4% of this survey, voted for Biden at 65 to 34. There's always a lot of talk about if Trump is going to make gains with black or Hispanic voters. In a close race, 1 or 2 percent could be a big deal. But at the same time, we also have to keep an eye on the margins with white voters for Harris. If she managed to just go up one point there, that would be significant. So aside from demographics, the turnout or enthusiasm overall is going to be important. This map will show you the turnout in the last three federal elections. In the blue wave of 2018, the turnout here was over 51. In the 2020 election with expanded mail-in ballots, it went up to just about 70. The top number is the most recent midterms. There, it sank back down to just over 54. I would guess the turnout is going to be somewhere between 20 and 2022. So Democrats have had a lot of success statewide in recent elections here. Republicans do control two statewide offices here, one for state treasurer and one for auditor general. However, in the most high-profile races, they've come up short. At the 2022 midterm election for a U.S. Senate, John Fetterman defeated Dr. Oz by almost five points. So it's close in one sense, but this was expected to be a potential pickup for the GOP. Oz did not get it done, and Democrats were able to hold it rather comfortably. The last thing we could do is get back over to Wikipedia and take a look at how accurate the polling was in 2020. So again, Biden won the state by 1.2, but the aggregate polling had Biden head by about 3.1. Real clear politics, though, was spot on with 1.2. 538 overestimated Biden with 4.6. The individual polls mostly had Biden ahead. A couple toward the end, though, did show Trump with a slight edge. If you go farther back before October into September, then all those polls did have Biden in the lead. So with all that said, which way will Pennsylvania trend? Well, like with many 
states we take a look at, we see a lot of polarization. Most of the rural counties of this state are extremely red. Then there's the deep blue urban counties, and then the lighter blue suburban counties, which seem to be moving more toward the left. When Trump came out of the scene in 16, he was a game changer, and he did accelerate a lot of trends in different directions. There is some room for him to expand, especially in the Northeast, but he would also have to chip away at some of that deficit in the suburbs. In theory, he could also continue to make some gains in the cities, but that's where Harris is going to come in to try to really run up her totals. Harris could easily have enthusiasm with black voters. That could give her a boost in some of those precincts we saw that move toward Trump, but she could also go in the other direction in some of these red counties. Some of those we saw move toward Biden last time. As usual, a lot of it could come down to the suburbs, and the Trump brand there has been considered toxic. So if they continue to get bluer, that could be the entire election. However, at the same time, the favorability of the party in power has not been positive. Even though a couple of issues, most notably abortion, is going to benefit Harris, inflation, immigration, maybe even crime, that could give Trump a bounce for voters that are looking to change directions. We frequently hear that voters think we're moving in the wrong direction. The question is, would they go back toward Trump? We're going to find out, but let's look at some of these different places in Pennsylvania. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this state? Aside from the mountains, the rivers, and the forests, is Harris going to win the state by a wider margin than Biden? Is Trump going to chip away at his deficit but still lose the state? Or is there going to be another hidden Trump vote out there and he can win the state by two or more points? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to help support the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.